Hey everybody, I've got a kind of a cool little thing that you can put together yourself, save a ton of money, and make a really nice kick space or toe kick, I guess they call it, heater unit. Um, I'm going to put the links to the stuff I use below, and you see that that nice little swisher sweet uh, fingers of mine? You're going to get to see them through the whole video. Some people complain about that, I don't know why. Um... This is a little small heater unit that's like for an Eden Pure or one of those electric fireplaces, the little fake ones. And you can get them for $15 to $25, depends on which ones you get. Um, I'll put a link below to the best one I use. And I've been doing this for years, and I'm doing one for this trailer here. So I just got done putting brand new taillights on it. It was in pretty bad shape, hard to find the parts, so we just made one. And it has a LED for the backup lights, a little, little 10 watt, and these are very nice lights. And I got done with that, and I started thinking, okay, um, well, we can't, can't use a lot of power. So I want to show you why. You know if you have an RV or if you have a, just an old house. If you've got an old house, and you know the wiring in them, man, they're dangerous. Some of them's got aluminum wiring in them. And you don't want to pull a lot of wattage, but you want to get some heat electrically, and you can't get it. So this thing here, it's not going to carry all of what you're looking for. Um, sometimes you get to parks where they've got a 30 amp, and it'll blow at 20 if you're an RVer. Um, this is one of the things I put in a lot of people's buses. So right now I've got a bus coming, and we're putting in a set of batteries, and I'm doing the test with my little uh, unit right here that is genuine. Y'all seen that video on it. I'll see if I can poke a spot on that video for y'all to see that little charger. Man, I freaking love it. It has made so many people happy when I put their batteries in. But today I'm working on, I'm going to build six of these total. But it's a, it's a kick, a toe kick heater when you're done. But it starts out with a grand total of about $8 for this box. And I could, I can use these kind of boxes or I can make them out of sheet metal. Um, I've made them out of sheet metal like these, but he's got four inches of clearance, and this is three and five-eighths tall, I believe it is, and it fits perfect, and in this case, let me get over here, I'm going to show you how I'm going to put one in this trailer. Now, we're only going to put one, and the reason is, is 600 watts, 650, something like that. Let me turn this little light on here. There we go. It's messy. Needs a lot of cleaning, but in here, it's a storage but it will allow me to put an intake vent somewhere safe and shoot it straight out into the room down low where you want that heat to come out and up so that when we're at a park, we don't have to use so much propane and at the same time, we don't overload our electrical system. And that's a big deal when you're dealing with travel trailers, RVs, older homes, motor homes, buses, whatever. Uh, this lady that's got this bus is going to have, she has a 50 amp service. So we're going to put two on one leg of the 220 split and one on the other leg. And these can be controlled by this. Now I'll put a link down there below to this one. Now this one's different. This one is special. And I'll see if I can get the exact identical link to it. Uh, because this one will go down to 39 degrees. That's not marked on here. But if you test it, 39 degrees. 37 to 40 with 39 centered. So... If you don't want your RV to freeze in the wintertime and you don't mind spending a few dollars and run 640 watts is about what this will pull, get it, make it, build it, use it, and you don't have to worry about stuff in your RV um, or your motorhome. So now this one here works perfect for all the different stuff we're going to do with it, and I'm going to show you it functioning, including get a little heat test on it there. And um, I want you to look at what this is. Now, see down here in the bottom of the box, it has screw holes. And you just use your standard quarter by halves like them. And they will uh, get the self-tappers. And if you use the center holes, it'll be far enough back. You can actually mount the center hole on this one and the two front holes here. And you see how that's raised right there? It doesn't let this mica... Um, surface touch. In fact, it gives you about three-eighths of an inch clearance. So you want to make sure you take that in consideration when you cut your hole 
that'll go in, the, in this box. Now, one of the things here is that for 15 to 25 bucks to get one of these, it comes with a shaded pole motor, long, very long life, real bearings, and a nice little very, very quiet squirrel cage blower. So you see that it is easy to manipulate, okay? And this setup, once you put this in here, you're going to cut your hole an eighth of an inch larger than your mica protector right there for your heat. And then you're going to make sure that the whole thing is perfectly centered, even including the spacing of the motor. So, like if I'm looking down on here, I will center it just like so. And then I will slide it forward till it touches exactly where I'm going to cut. Now, I don't need it to shoot through. We're not going to make it to where it goes through. We're going to actually be back just enough to where it's basically touching. Um, where you can put a playing card in there. That's about it of where the cut is. Almost protruding through. And then you'll use something like I'm going to use on these, which is just some standard woven wire or bitty mesh or whatever you want to call that. Hardware cloth. That'll go on the other side across the front. And a nice little wood trim attach. And it'll be recessed about a quarter to a half an inch, you know, depending on like your paneling wall. And the best thing is that this pushes air out so well that it won't even get warm around the surface there. But if you put shoes or something in front of it, they'll get warm quick. Now, and it also has a over temp. So at 137 degrees, it will go click and shut itself off. That's back feed temperature. In other words, if you put something in front of it and block it, it'll shut itself off. Now... A lot of people don't know how to wire these outside of the schematic that is on the Eden Pures or the electric fireplaces, and there's dozens of them. There's all kinds of models, but there's only three companies that make the, the replacement heater cart cartridge, um, and this was from this one's from the best one. So um, that's the reason I'm showing it to you. Now it uses the thicker mica that protects it. It uses the full tungsten black oxide and it does not glow you see a slight lift in the color but it doesn't actually glow hot and that's what you want you don't want one that's uses shorter and less wire that glows so if you take this out of the fireplace heater and you wire it up it's only going to pull 640 watts now it's set up if you'll see right here right there get down in there right there and right there. So the way I hook them up is use the bottom one so it uses the rear coil, so the wiring back here in the back, all right? The reason I do that is because I don't want the high temperature right here at the front, and it, it just blows it straight through. But the way that they wire these up in those kind of heaters is they wire them up with a high and low switch, and a lot of times those high and low switches are just on a relay. It's what fails in those fireplace things, um, or the Eden Cures or whatever. They they use a relay and they stick or they fail and then that's when you have your problem and it causes these to burn out or it causes the circuitry to burn out in those 300 and 100, 150 to 300 dollar heater units but this is cheap and it's durable this actually will run a long time you can get 20 years out of one of these if it's not in one of those heaters so here's the cool part the wiring process is just stupid simple okay so you're going to have your hot coming out of your, your, which is called your load. That'll be your load right there, your hot side. And then you'll have your line, that's power coming in. And your ground wire will just attach to your metal box somewhere. You'll just put a lead onto your metal box or a screw. Uh, you don't put it on this, you put it on your box. And you have nothing more than a common that attaches to the existing common that comes down here and it's bridged between the two circuits for your two temperature settings. So if you look down here, they're just straight through and there's a tab that connects those two internally. Now, the best way that this works is connecting it to the bottom. I don't know if I can get in there and show you. Let me see if I can look down in here better. You'll see that those tabs, and don't worry, that black is not burnt. Uh, you'll see those tabs, one goes to the front wire. That's that top one right here, that's this one. And this bottom one goes to the rear wire, heating wire. Oh, well, it's hard to show you that accurately, but that's what it does. Now, you're going to feed it through its thermal switch, its thermal overheat switch, and back out. 
and to your hot. And then you have a hot here that will go to your blower motor. And that is the hot that's used will go to the top on your shaded pole motor. Okay. And you'll have your common that'll run over to your common load on your, on your uh, heater. And you will use the lower end of your shaded pole motor for your common here. So you see the white wire there going into that. So it's two wires into the common over here. And then over here, it will be two wires, both blower and and heat coming into the hot wire from our thermostat. Now, let me go ahead and get this plugged in right quick. I've got it on a watt meter. And I don't want to run this a long time because it's going to be on my true sine wave uh, inverter back there. And it's a 3,000 water and <laughs> it will eat a lot of power in a short period of time. So there's our voltage. And we're going to kick it over to watts. Now, you'll see what I got. Now, the ground wire doesn't matter for this test. It's just, you just need to put it on your box, on your metal box in case, you know, what in case you hit it, hit the box with something. You want to make sure it's service grounded. All right. Now, over here, I've got it currently in the shop temperature right now. It's about 63 degrees. So, we're going to run it on up until I'm going to put them both in there and you'll see it kick on. There we go. It's about 60. I guess I'm at about 60 degrees in the shop. Cooler than I thought. So I'll take that here. And we're going to get a reading inside and let it warm up a little bit. So there it is. It's about 250 to 275 degrees. It'll build up slowly and then level out at about three and a quarter. So I got cold room temperature in here right now. So it'll get to 325 degrees blowing out of it. But the cool part is, let me see if I can get something here. The cool part is, is that it doesn't blow a lot now. I just diverted the heat to the thermostat. So let me kick it back on again. There we go. Get that thermostat over so it's not blowing the heat straight on it. Now, you see here, it's not blowing real hard. It's just moving that bag. But it's blowing significant amount of warmth. And this is the cool part. In the heater, this is a 750 watt, actual 780 draw. That's what it does in the heater. Over here, it uses 150 watts less. So there's your draw right there. And it actually should be reading higher because my inverter volts are only 112 right now. My batteries are down, and, and that big mean will adjust to that. So it'll run 110 all the way up to 125, and right now it's running low. Plus, I got a whole lot of extension cords on it. But there you go there, and then you'll see the amp pull is 5.52 amps. So if you think about a 30-amp service on an RV, or if you think about a 15-amp breaker in your kitchen or in your old home or in a bus like in her case, um, she's capable of 50 amps of service, but three of these running 600 and something watts will heat the hell out of that bus. There you go. Pretty simple. That little Demplex right there is perfect for very low temperature maintenance. In, in other words, keeping the house from freezing. And you can use these on baseboards, but my preference is to use these on things like this. The baseboard is too inaccurate but something that actually moves the heat into the room is way more accurate. So um, I'm showing you this red box here and how I would do it on the red box. You can do it with something like this by cutting the square out and make sure you have to put like on this red box, we're going to have an intake tubes, little small two inch ones on each side to draw our air in where you have to do that. But there you go, guys, a pretty simple, pretty cheap, Pretty effective, very warm. Let's see if I can get it back in them coils. Very warm output heater that starting to warm that down here. Look at this, 108 degrees on that wood. And and safe, safe on that wood. Now I'm not gonna mount it on wood, but when it's properly mounted, you'll see the lift. There it is on this little flat space. It gives you about a quarter of an inch above that. So you want to make sure you properly 
use the screws and mount that in there. Right now you can listen to it. It's running. It's just quiet, totally quiet. And when it's inside the box in the kick panel, you set that, you'll never know it. Come on. All right, guys, trying to help you out the best I can to give you an idea of something you can do cheap, effectively, affordably. Total price for all of this. This is about 20 bucks. This one's about 15 to 25 average. I buy these for $17.50 a piece, but there you go. Do it yourself, guys. Easy, really easy. Be creative.